one. Ooh, they're trying to come. We get there. It takes a little bit. It takes a little bit. Whatever. One person wanted me to rotate the camera left. any volume from you. That's what, that's what someone said earlier. Can't hear me at all. Oh wait. Oh, oh yeah, they can hear you. You can hear me all right. Since my first live post, I'm still trying to figure all this out. And my cameraman is done finally there, so. Uh, 24. 24. Yeah, All right, then. I'm going to go ahead and get started, folks. So, as I said, I'm going to do a live video here. It's my first time. I don't really have a clue what I'm doing. Uh, sitting here in the living room, you know, the best place to shoot a mate, especially if the wife's not around. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through a quick rundown of the one and only corn recipe that I run on Salan. Ran it on Roosevelt. Really, no need to for me to run any other corn or colors. Um, so I see my son sitting there laughing behind the camera, so I can only imagine what some of you are saying. But uh, I'll do a little uh, question answer portion at the end of it. Uh, but until then, I'll just go through and kind of show exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, and like I said, this is exactly what I do. I don't deviate from this at all. This is just my corn here. I still add scents, you know, later on or right before it goes out of the boat. So talk a little louder. Can you guys? Okay, I'll try to talk a little bit louder, but uh, try not to wake yeah, they, up the neighbors. So. They can't really hear you. Can you say nobody can hear me, or is it one guy? It's a bunch of people saying talk louder, and they can't hear you. All right, can you all hear me now? Can you hear me a little better? Without me actually screaming. <laughs> oh yeah, now you're fine. All right, here we go. So, of course, as everybody else usually uses, the Green Giant Stream Steam Crisp White Shoe Pig Corn. So, uh, just went down and got a couple cans today, just for this little demonstration. So, open the can up, and then I always like to drain my corn, get some of the juice off of it. Uh, it makes it a little tackier, which will then take the color uh, and the scent, I think, a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and dump that in one of the wife's colanders and let it sit there and drain for just a little bit while I'm taking care of other things. Okay, so now I got that all dumped. Let it drain out the juice. So then the, the first part that I always add to my corn is good old chicken of the sea oil tuna fish. Um, throughout the years I've just found that this is the pretty much the grossest and greasiest one out there. So it's the one I use everything from my stuffing for my super bait to also you know curing my corn hair. So but what I like to do is I don't like to actually get the tuna out of because I'm you know just trying to cure my corn. So what I do is I open it and then I'll drain it into a clear container and you'll see why here in a minute. It's okay that some of the chunks come out, you know, it's going to happen. That just adds a little bit to the scent. But I'll squeeze it real good, get all the scent out, or all the oils out, and the fat. And no, that wasn't a fat joke either. The fat of the tuna. So, once I get that drained, I'll still save this tuna and scent it up later for, uh, for stuffing for my super bait. Yes, even super baits for kokanee, including the new 2.25 from Brad. Okay, so I got most of that out. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let that settle. And uh, 
and I'll show you in a little bit what happens is the oil that they use in these cans is actually vegetable oil in a lot of them. So if you let it sit with just the oil, it'll separate the oil and the fat. So I'll let it sit there for a little bit, and then I'll drain off the vegetable oil because I don't like to put that part into my bait. I'd rather just use that good fat. Okay, so the corn's drained off a little bit here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and dump that in my container, most of it that I can. Okay, now most of everything else that I'm going to put in there is tablespoon. It, it, it's super easy to just use the tablespoon. So what I'll do here is I'll take, I'm going to do orange. I always do orange corn. Some people use pink. Some people use natural. Uh, I mean, even guys run chartreuse. I personally just like orange. Uh, I feel that that works best for my lake. Every lake has its preference for colors, but I've never fished anywhere where orange corn didn't outperform every other color. So what I'm going to do is I get my corn good and spread out in the dish there. And so then I'll take one tablespoon of Hoskey's Fire Cure. Okay, in the orange color. The reason why I'm using the fire cure is it helps to cure the corn. Okay, so I'll add other color to it later, but I always like to have uh, the fire cure in there to help tighten up the corn a little bit and makes it tougher. And uh, also adds some krill in it that's in the fire cure. There's already krill in here, so you know we all know that token eat shrimp as well. So I'll take that. About a tablespoon and I'll pour that in. Pour that more here. You don't want to overdo it. If you overdo it, it will dry out the corn and make little almost petrified corn nuggets. So you don't want to overdo it. A good tablespoon just to add some color and to tighten it up a little bit. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do to try to keep that from burning the top corn where I put it in. I'm going to add in Potsky's fire dye in the orange. So the fire dye also adds UV, makes the color of it pop a whole lot more. Okay, so again, I'm going to do about a tablespoon. Kind of drizzle it all over it. Okay, and then I'm going to stir it up. Just stir it up a little bit, get it all good and mixed up. The reason why I stir between processes is to make sure not burn the corn that, that the fire cure is sitting on. Okay, so I get it all good and seared up here. Now I'm gonna add McCormick's garlic salt. Okay, I always like to mix my scents. So I'm using tuna, which is a fish, you know, oil. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm figuring is my feed response. So then I always like to add in garlic to trigger the aggression response to a fish. Okay, so I'm going to add in another tablespoon, or one tablespoon of the McCormick's garlic salt. Again, you don't want to overdo it with this. Your corn will get stronger the next day. So it'll smell garlicky when I put it in the fridge, but tomorrow it'll smell a whole lot stronger. Kind of like Frank's breath. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and stir that up too. So now we've got the fire cure the fire dye, and the McCormick's garlic salt in there. Now, the last step of what I like to do is, like I said, I like to, boy, that's strong already. I like to get the oil off of, or the vegetable oil off of the good oil in the tuna can, right? So, if you look in here real close, you can actually see where it's separated. And there's a line that's different from the vegetable oil to the fish fat. So what I'm going to do is one of these little medicine droppers or, you know, ones you get from the dentist and stuff. I use that and I put it in just far enough to suck the vegetable oil off the top. This is something I also do when I'm curing uh, tuna for my super baits. I always try to get all the vegetable oil off. that I figure I just 
There's no use in having vegetable oil in there. There's not many vegetarian fish out there that we're targeting. All right, so I got most of it out of there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that one can worth of oil that's left, and it's kind of the white, milky, fish fat stuff. So I just pour that whole thing in there. Another thing with getting the vegetable oil off is that when you get that off there, it's not going to be so... Uh, so slimy and everything on your corn when you go to get it out of your dish. And you can also do this in like half batches, quarter batches. I mean, a lot of times <coughs> people aren't fishing as much as I do, you know, every day. So they're not going to burn through one can of corn. It's going to take quite a while. The thing is also with all the, with the cure, the fire cure and the McCormick's garlic salt, you are going to cure that corn. So whereas a lot of guys want to mix fresh corn every day, I can use this container for up to a week or even longer if it still smells good it's good you can still use it so there we go and the color in this if you want it brighter you can add more fire dye to it if you open it up the next day and maybe your corn didn't quite get drained off enough and so your corn's still kind of real 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 soft you can add a little more fire here but again this corn will take on that color for the next few days. I mean, up to day three, you're still getting it brighter and brighter orange. So, I always just pop the lid on there, throw it in the refrigerator, and then, you know, go put it in the fridge, and then the next day or so, you know, anytime I think about it, I go along and just shake the container to try to get the juice and the tuna oil and garlic mixed up again and get more color all over the corn. So, that's pretty much it. That's the one color the corn I use, the one set. Now, when you're all done with this, you know, when you take it up fishing, I'm not saying, you know, don't add another set to your bait or to your lure. You know, it's no secret that I use super dipping sauce, you know, to merge the whole lure as it's going out of the boat. That way that your human set doesn't, you know, paint the lure or anything like that. But, you know, you can use any set other than this, but this is just my corn here. So... Other than that, that's about it. I mean, it's that simple. I, you know, everybody has their favorite. Everybody has something that works for them. But personally, me, I have not used another color or scented cured corn out of my boat in four years. So I know I kind of went through it a little bit quick. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing on this Facebook Live thing. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in, and uh, and Tyler can jump on here and tell me uh, what they are, and I can try to answer them for you. And uh, Frank's not allowed to ask any questions because he's anti-corn. So uh, anybody else, I'm more than welcome to uh, answer your questions. Um, uh, one guy, it was uh, he asked for if you have a maggot recipe. Uh, it was um, I forgot the name. It was Frank something. Frank Billing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Frank had to get on there and mouth off right away about the the maggot recipe. So we all know that Frank likes Berkeley maggots, which make absolutely no sense. First off, they're not real. They're, they're a fake maggot, okay? So, but last year at the Derby, uh, I just so happened to cure up some uh, maggots for Frank. I use the exact same cure for those maggots that I do my corn. And whether he'll admit it or not, they fished really well last year. Uh, but yeah, the exact same process. You could probably even go less. Well, you'd have to go less on your garlic salt and your fire cure to keep from probably drying those out. But I'm sure you don't want all that gooey crap that gets on your hands, you know, to, to go away. So, but yeah, that'll work, Frank. Um, did you say garlic salt or plain garlic earlier? It's I only use the garlic salt. I do not use garlic powder. I do not use minced garlic. I use garlic salt. Whether you want to use the kind with the little parsley's in it, that I don't think really matters. I use the garlic salt. I have found that minced garlic will discolor and will spoil a lot faster, whereas I'm trying to cure my bait. So if you want to throw like minced garlic in your bait the day of and use it and throw it away, that'll work. But, again, I'm trying to cure my bait to last and to absorb the scent in. So I would, I would only use the garlic salt. 
And it doesn't have to be McCormick, right? It, it doesn't. I, this is something that the, uh, the guy that I started out with uh, in the guide world, uh, my buddy Nathan, he always told me McCormick's garlic salt. I've never had an issue with it, so I keep running it. You know, why change what works? You could probably use any garlic salt. Uh, I'm just used to running this one. So, you know, if you do use a different brand, you might have to adjust how much or how little to use to try to keep the right texture on your corn. And they also want to know how long does the batch stay good for? I, I have ran one batch of corn. You know, keep it cold. Keep it refrigerated. You can't leave it out in the sunlight. You know, it will spoil. You're not doing a real deep cure on this. Uh, I know I'm going to try this year to use uh, Dwayne England's shrimp cure recipe on corn. Uh, those shrimp have lasted me up to three or four years in the refrigerator and still fish fine. So I'm actually going to try that with corn because I, I don't enjoy curing bait. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to give that a whirl. But this right here will last up to, you know, I've ran it seven, seven days without it spoiling uh, and fishing good. Normally by then I just run out of corn and have to do more. But as long as you keep it cool and refrigerated or cool on ice, it'll last you up to seven days. Have you tried other types of corn besides shoe pig? I can only imagine that that's Dean Phillips asking if I use other types of corn. Was it? Not TJ L. Laws. Okay, no. I only use the white shoe pig corn. There's a lot of different theories that go around. One, um, that shoe pig corn is the only corn that a fish can digest if it gets in their stomach. Um, so I've never, you know... I've only used this one. I mean, it's the one that everybody says works, you know, back before I really got into it and got guiding. And honestly, again, it works for me. You know, if somebody else wants to use a different kind of corn, by all means, go for it. But uh, I, I stick with the white shoe pig. Um, and will it work with the fire cure, or do you have to use the dye? Or like... It, it can very well work with just the fire cure. You can use just fire cure and, and use your bait. The reason why I like to use fire dye is for a more intense color on the bait, plus fire dye is UV. So it adds to the color, you know, it adds to the color, plus it adds UV to the bait. Um, you know, it's amazing when you, like, if I go to drain this corn in the water at first thing in the morning, it'll put a cloud of color out uh, when the daylight starts hitting it. So I believe in putting the UV... Fire dye on the bait. I just think it makes for a lot, a lot more colorful presentation. And I think that's all the questions. Unless if anyone wants to say something right now. Does anybody else have any questions at all? Any questions? I'll give you a couple minutes if anybody types something in. You know that's not overly obnoxious. I'm more than happy to answer it, even if it's not about corn. You know, I mentioned you know curing up tuna too, and I'll probably do another video about that, but. If you uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask away. I'm an open book. I don't hold anything back. And Frank wants to know if he, if he will be a hypocrite if he runs orange corn up the chain. You know, know what? Showing. Honestly, when Frank, when you told me about the maggot thing, I was, you know, I'm dead set against him. I still won't run him. But guess what? I put him on hooks and ran him against my corn. And I outfished the maggots on my corn. What? As I'll tell everybody, and this isn't just answering Frank's question, run what you're comfortable with, run what you're confident with, you're going to catch more fish than trying to imitate anybody else. So like even my gear, take it, adjust it, do what works for you. But uh, no, Frank, you will not be a hypocrite if you use corn. You'd probably actually be showing that you're smarter than you look. And um, how deep? Oh, how deep? You know what, folks? Look at your fish finder. Look at your fish finder. When you see the big yellow blob go across it, drop your gear there. Those are the fish. Your fish finder is not a liar. It will tell you where to fish. And if all else fails, balls deep. Just go balls deep and hope for the best. That's what some people reply to. <laughs> um, do, you, do you use Posky Orange or Fire Dye Red? Or You said missed the first part. Oh, um, sorry. I use orange fire cure and orange fire dye. 
I mean, I guess you could mix them up a little bit, you know, if you wanted that kind of a pink and orange. Um, I, I don't, I'm not really a flame red guy for kokanee. Uh, the, the two most popular colors are, uh, are the orange and the pink. So I use orange fire cure and orange fire dye to make the brightest orange form that I can. And uh, very good. Let's see. If anybody else has any more questions, feel free to ask. Oh, and they also want you to post up the whole recipe again because a lot of people missed the first part. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, once I get off here, I'll, I'll sit up and put the whole recipe down. I mean, even right now, I can sit here and tell you, one can of corn drained off so that the juice is gone, gets tackier. Um, and then I drain one can of chicken of the sea, tuna and oil, into a clear dish. Okay, so now you got your drained corn, drained tuna. So, once my corn is drained, I dump it in the container. One tablespoon of Potsky's Fire Cure sprinkled over the top. Then one tablespoon of Potsky's Fire Dye in orange sprinkled over it. Stir, stir it up real good so that it doesn't burn the corn, the cure doesn't burn the corn. Okay, then I add one tablespoon of McCormick's Garlic Salt. Then I take the clear dish and one of these nifty little medicine syringes and I suck all of the, the vegetable oil off the top of the tuna oil. Then I pour that in, close the lid, shake it up, and you're good to go. But I will comment the, the recipe out again. And then um, why not mix some of the tuna meat with the corn? You very well can. I mean, it, there, there's nothing to say that you can't mix the tuna into the corn. I do run a lot of the Brad Super Baits for kokanee. So I use this. I'll save this for the stuffing. This, and sometimes I'll mix the tuna with shrimp. But nothing's to say you can't mix that in with the corn. But, you know, it. I guess that would be better than throwing it away. But uh, I've just never had the need for it. I think it would probably be more messy than anything. Now you're bringing out corn kernels with tuna on them. It's falling all over your boat. Uh, everybody knows how I like to keep a clean boat. So, uh, but yeah, you very well could do that. It may spoil a little quicker uh, just because you don't have a lot of cure in there. but uh, Or you might want to even add more of the cure ingredients so that the tuna will cure as well. But it's just something I don't do. And I think we're good. No one else is Are we all good? No more questions? Any questions? Did everybody leave yet? Oh, no, we still got, like, 84 people in here. 84 people. We were wow. at 100 earlier. Wow. That's a lot. All righty, right folks. Sure. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I'm going to do a lot more of these videos. Uh, try to give you all intel on how I do it and, and why I do the things that I do out on the water. But until then, I'm just going to uh, I'll be signing off. And I'm uh, going to have to lay down, do a little relaxing. The way that only I can. This is Sam with Slam and Sam and Guide Service signing out, folks. Wish me luck.